As a yoga teacher, I have my pet hates, and they're not at all to do with my students. They're really to do with the way that yoga's practiced that I don't think is very helpful or very realistic. And here are some tips from me as to how to make your practice safer for your body that you might not think are actually the way that we do it or should do it in yoga. And the first one is bending your legs. Yeah. So many, many people come to me and say, I can't do yoga, I can't touch my toes. And I say to them, well, can you touch your toes, really? And they're like, well, no, I can't. And like, show me. And they do this. I can't touch my toes. And I say to them, well, bend your legs. Can you touch your toes? And they're like, yes, but it's not properly. It's not with straight legs. And I'm like, well, actually, isn't that better for your body if you can't do it with straight legs and then forcing yourself to do it? It's not very natural. And maybe bending your legs is a better way to go. And you can see this from the side. My spine is really arched and you would never pick something up from the floor like that, would you? You would probably hurt your lower back. And what you should do is bend your legs, get a nice neutral spine and then pick something up. So why don't we do that there? So I always say, when you're doing this folding forward, which we do a lot in yoga, especially in some practices, bend your legs, feel free to bend your legs a lot more than you think you might need to. So for example, I'm inhaling, and then I'm folding forwards. It's better to bend your legs, get a nice long spine and bring your hands down, have connection between your belly and your thighs, then to come down and arch your back and pull your back every time. It's not going to be a problem if you do it once or twice, but if you do it every day, it might not be very good for your lower back. So that's my first tip. My second tip is that depth is not everything. And we very often think that we have to get deeper into the pose. We have to get further in because then we'll become enlightened. And sadly, we don't, yeah? We just maybe injure ourselves and it's supposed to be a non-harming practice. So what I encourage people to do is go for length over depth. And you can see it here in this example. If I'm coming into a back bending position, I want to think about length rather than depth. So for example, I'm coming into a lunge and I'm going for a back bend, which means I'm going that way, it was quite a bad name really, because it suggests you're just sort of bending in your back. I like to think about it as actually moving forwards and up. So here I'm going for length and height, and really keeping the breath going, instead of depth, which might look like this. Yeah, and that is going to hurt me. And it looks much more impressive, yeah? But actually, I'm really going into my lower back. Whereas if I come up and think about the height, it's harder work in a way, and it will actually give me more support and open out the parts of the body that need to open out, rather than just the bits that already open out, which will then become weaker if we do that too much. So length, and stability over depth and flopping out. Yeah. That will help us to have a safe, sustainable practice. Another tip that's related to that is not to compare yourself to others. So easy to be thinking, oh, I'm not doing what they are doing. And it's always the case that if you're a beginner and you go to a yoga class, that you end up next to an acrobat. And you're just thinking, oh my goodness, how do they do that? and actually really taking pride in doing something, you know, a step towards a posture and really being there and present with that is an advanced yoga practice. I'm always like, wow, that's brilliant. I prefer that in a student than them forcing themselves to do something just because the person next to them is doing it. We all have unique and wonderful bodies and our yoga practice should celebrate the movement that we can do and not leave us feeling deficient or like we're less than or we're not good enough. 
I think that's really, really important. Find practices that you really enjoy. Find teachers that you really resonate with and listen to yourself as your guide rather than comparing yourself or thinking this is how you should be doing it.